Okay, this video is all about what you need to know about Yellowstone before you go there in 2020. And I'm just giving you an overview of the park. So let's start with number one, which is the main sites of Yellowstone. The biggest, most popular sites for Yellowstone are Old Faithful, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, the Grand Prismatic Spring, and then just wildlife that you'll see throughout the park. Number two, the geography of Yellowstone. Here I have a map that I wanna to use to kind of orient ourselves as I talk about this. And of course you've got the, the lower loop right here and the upper loop. And you know, I've thought a lot about this. I've been to Yellowstone probably over 20 times in my life. And I was, I was just thinking about all the places I've been and kind of trying to visualize the park and what I would, how I would explain it to somebody. And I thought, you know, you could kind of draw a line about right, right down the middle. And on this side of the park, you have geysers. On this side of the park, you're more likely to see wildlife. It's not quite that simple. You have a few geysers over here on the other side. And of course, you're going to see wildlife all over the place. But there's Lamar Valley and Hayden Valley over here, which you know, you're just likely to see a lot more wildlife on this side of the park. So that's kind of one simple way to think about it. Some people are there for the geysers. Some people are there for the wildlife. I have a, a family member who just doesn't care about seeing the geysers when we go there. just wants to go look for wildlife. Um, but I like, I like seeing both. Yellowstone has just so much to offer. Of course, it's also got a, a huge lake. It's got a, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone right there. So it, it really has something for everybody. Finally, just a little bit about the rivers of Yellowstone. If you look at this line right here on this map, this is called the Continental Divide, which means that all the water that falls on this side of the line will flow north and then east to the Atlantic Ocean, and everything that falls on this side of the line will flow to the Pacific Ocean. So all the Basically, all the rivers in Yellowstone flow north. Here's the big Yellowstone River. This is what creates the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone right here. And it'll flow out of the park north. Um, another big river that you might encounter here in the park is the Firehole River, which comes up here. And there's the Firehole Falls right here, a place that you can swim. It merges with this Gibbon River right here forms the Madison River and that heads out in that direction. So kind of interesting that they all flow north there. And of course, you're gonna see some real pretty rivers as you drive through the park. Number three, practical information. Okay, let's go over amenities. The major stops in Old Faith, or in uh, Yellowstone, that are gonna have all your amenities that you need are Old Faithful, it, it, Old Faithful kind of cracks me up because you actually get off the highway like you're getting off of a freeway and take a left and drive back over the road and into this little city. You know, it makes you feel like you're you're kind of in this this little town. You're in this national park, but it makes you feel like you're in a little village or something. And, and, and indeed, they end up calling these little villages. You got Grant Village, Canyon Village, Mammoth Hot Springs. Those places have uh, restaurants, gasoline, grocery stores, and medical services. So you're really not ever too far away from one of those. Over here at Lake Village and Fishing Bridge, you have some medical and a little gas station there, but no restaurants. And then these places here, Madison and Norris, these are just kind of smaller places. You can see that they have these information stations right here. Uh, they're like little small visitor centers with usually there's a park ranger in there. They'll do some park programs and things like that. 
but at, at the other major sites, they have like major visitor centers that you can go into. Okay, let's talk about getting around Yellowstone. Of course, you'll be driving. It's a massive park. It's larger than Rhode Island and Delaware combined. Uh, so there are, again, there are two loops here. And on each loop, there are some major points that you can stop at. So upper loop has four, I guess you'd say. Lower loop has six spots that you can stop at. I didn't mean to say these were the only stops, just the main stops. And the park suggestion is basically 30 to a lot, 30 minutes of drive time between each stop. So it takes about two and a half hours maybe to drive around each loop. You can see the lower loop is slightly bigger than the upper loop, so it might take you a little bit longer there. But that's just of, of straight drive time. The speed limit in Yellowstone is 45 miles per hour. Now, sometimes you go a little faster than that. Sometimes you go a little slower, especially if there's some wildlife that causes traffic jams or if you just want to get out and look at things. <clears throat> look at things. But uh, anyway, the, the standard there is to a lot about two and a half hours of drive time. Now, something important right here, this road is closed for 2020. So you won't really be doing a full upper loop if you go there this year. And I believe it'll be closed next year as well in 2021. So you'll have to kind of plan for that a little bit. Um, well, a lot, but anyway, um, the drive time, because it takes about two to two and a half hours of driving around the loops, by the way, that's not accounting for the fact that you're getting from Typically, you're staying at West Yellowstone. Most people staying at West Yellowstone. Um, to get in here is a 14-mile drive. So that's about 20-minute drive. So, you know, you have to tack on another 40 minutes going in and out of the park. So it's a, it's a day of driving. You have to kind of plan for that. I'm going to use a little bit different color here because sometimes people will kind of get down here and it's a little bit like, okay, what do we do now? It's five o'clock in the afternoon. Are we wanting to, to turn around and go back or go this way? And if you go this way, um, it's fine, but you might be tempted to stop at some of these places and just make a, ex an extremely long day out of it. So you really do kind of get to a point where you're past no return. So just what you want to do with Yellowstone is have a game plan going in but then you also need to be flexible because your day is going to change for sure. If you end up seeing some geysers or something like that or some wildlife, that could certainly throw off a schedule. So you can't be too tied to your schedule, but you do need a, a lot for the fact that, you know, once you get out, out and about, it's going to take you a long time to get back around that loop and get home. So, Look, most people do it. They, they do a loop a day is, is kind of the way most people do it. But just a couple of tips there to think about. Number four, park updates for 2020. Okay, and finally, a few things to know about the road closures and delays in Yellowstone for 2020. The main thing is that this road from Tower Roosevelt down to Canyon Village is closed. So you can see that you can still go on this green line out here to Lamar Valley. Um, but Tower, which has a little stop with a restaurant and ice cream and souvenir shop, and you can take a little walk out and see a waterfall, that whole thing is closed. And then this road right here is kind of a, a mountain range. You get up to Mount Washburn. All that's closed. So this will ruin your upper loop in a, in a way. You can't do the traditional loop that you would normally do. So you might have to plan your trip a little differently. There's also a few other construction projects here. Um, fishing bridge uh, just outside of the north entrance there up near Gardner. And then out of the west entrance here, way up way up north, this is, there's an area Hebgen Lake up here so there's a little bit of possible delays 
on those roads as well.